Dominant Species Marine is a reimagining of the game Dominant Species. It's sort of a spin-off, maybe, but it is definitely not the same game, just with more sea-based animals. There are a couple of pretty fundamental changes that have been made around the basic engine of the original Dominant Species, in case you played that game, and that those changes make for a quite different game. Although, if you play the original game and you're looking at the board right now, you're like, that looks familiar. Yes, the look of the components is very familiar, but again, gameplay is different. In this game, like in the original game, players will control families of animals, and during the game you will place cubes representing species of your family on the board, the tiles will be added to explore more of the world and then you'll start moving your space around, migrating, speciating, all sort of things ultimately with the very worthy goal of scoring as many victory points as possible that's at its art, it's a hero game and the player with the highest score wins the game so we are families of animals, and these are the four options, each coming with a player race such as this one. And you have a number of elements printed there at the beginning of the game. That is the stuff that your family of animals can feed on. And uh, so if you are in a, in a place that has an element on your board, you're fine. It's otherwise, if you are... Where there are no elements, or not an element that you have, then uh, the species is endangered and it may be removed by game effects. Also, you may be able to add discs here to represent other elements that you can, you can uh, munch on as you evolve. Very important player A with all the actions that you can take, so that tells you this is a fairly complex game. Here you have a slot for a special trait card, and uh, you will choose one from three that are given to you at the beginning of the game. And here you have the area where you can place your, your species, just like so. There we go. We also have the cylinders that represent the actions that you can take. This is a worker placement game, that is how actions are selected. Each player has a set of basic cylinders uh, and the number that you get depends on the number of players. But then there are these special cylinders that are acquired during the game by taking the domination action. And basically you need to have the most presence in a certain element uh, in order to be able to collect. Well, this tile will be in front of you in your play area to indicate that you are the owner and then this is placed in the area of the board where you select actions. So now you have more actions and also you have better actions because the special cubes can be placed without the restrictions that affect the basic pawns, also, uh, they're worth victory points at the end of the game. So, here we have um, an area with event cards that also act as the timer of the game. When one of these is selected through an action and resolved, you do what it says, you slide down the other ones, and then a new one is revealed, possibly there are game effects that need to be resolved when the card enters play, and that's the general idea. Uh, in the bottom five cards of the deck, uh, there's going to be an asteroid card shuffled in there, and that triggers the end of the game. Also, you do not use every card in each game, a number of them is removed, so you don't know exactly which events you're going to have, which is super important, so you can't count cards too well. These event cards may also have these symbols here that are resolved whenever, after resolving the rest of the card. The extinction event, that is when endangered species that are somewhere where they don't have enough food are removed from the game. And this is the event that checks, that works with this card here. So there are going to be thermal vents on the board. And if a player has absolute majority of the number of thermal events that, where they have a presence, they get this card. If there's a tie, then no one controls the card. When this event is triggered by a, an event card, then the player who owns this card, so has the most uh, co controller presence in the most events at that time, 
they score bonus victory points and every time that you score bonus victory points you look at this table here and uh, that's the many victory points for example if I have this card it's time to score it and I have a presence in five thermal vents then uh, I get 15 victory points which is sweet main board main area where again we're gonna place terrain tiles resources and our species and then here is the engine, the moving engine of the game. The area where we're going to select our actions and resolve them. Now, the original game had an action queue, meaning that players were going to place the cylinders and then they were going to resolve them. Not here no more. Here is more of a traditional worker placement in that you're going to place your worker, resolve that action. Then next player goes and places their, key, their cylinder they resolve that action and so on and so forth. Also, also uh, you can choose to retrieve your cylinders as a free action, so you just get them all back. So it's not so strict like in other worker placement games where we all place our workers and once you're done, we all get them back, then we start again. It's more of a fluid thing because people may retrieve their cylinders at different times, uh, opening up more spaces and just changing what's available. Restrictions. When you place a cylinder, it has to be after other cylinders of yours. After means lower on this display and to the right, as if you were reading a text. So since I placed the cylinder there now, these are the spaces are available to me, but right now that one is not, for example. So suppose I decide to place that one there, and then next turn I place that one there, and so I just go down there. And again, there may be a time when I'm retrieving my cylinders early on, just because I really need to go to some special spot there. Remember these special cylinders so the players will acquire? They do not have to be placed according to the before and after restriction. They don't have to be placed in a in an open in um in an empty space. They can bump a, a another cylinder and that and that is returned to the owning player. There are even some special spaces, as you can see with the cylinder, where only these cylinders can go, and they grant you special abilities, special things. So what are the actions? Again, that's the that's the heart of the game. Select an action, resolve it immediately. That's a huge difference from the original game. And, uh, and the next player does the same thing. Abundance. So you take one of those available elements and you place it on the board. And that is how now we can uh, feed in new areas and feed different things. Autotrophs. So that action is not available at the beginning. Now, once everybody has retrieved their uh, their cylinders, whenever they may be, that triggers a reseed action, and the abundance tokens that are still there at that point slide down, slide down here, becoming available for the auto trial. Same thing, actually, starting from the second reseed, if there are still any any uh, tokens there, they slide down in the depletion, so the depletion action also is available, not at the beginning of the game. The auto trough, so you can swap an element in that box if there is one with one on a matching geyser or smoker. Those these vents uh, that can be geysers or smokers. The depletion remove a match if there is one. <clears throat> you remove a matching element from the board. Can be pretty mean. Can endanger uh, species. Adaptation. <clears throat> you take one of these available elements, and that's how you can feed on new stuff or even specialize, become even a bigger consumer of a specific kind of element, but that's how you got them. At the, during a reseed, if there is any available, they slide down and they become available for the regression action. When you take the regression action, for the time being, you simply place a cube there. That doesn't do anything at that time. What happens is that the next reseed event, uh, players may will lose discs, uh, the discs that are placed on their element section, unless they're using, they have a cube there to protect them. So all that the regression action does is to protect you from, well, regressing, I guess. Speciation. 
that is when uh, we select an earth, an earth tile matching an element next to where we are, say plankton in this case, and we can place new uh, species there. That's when we make babies, basically. And so, for example, I could now make babies around plankton, I could make babies around worms, if that's where I place my cube and so on and so forth. And the number of, uh, of species that you create that way is indicated here based on the number of that is indicated there and based on the kind of terrain. Lots of babies in sand, that kind of surprised us. Wanderlust is when you discover new tiles, so you take the tile on top of one of the three stacks available, you place it on the board as long as it is adjacent to previous ones that are already there, you score big three points, and then you have a chance, you and other players, of immediately migrating some of your cubes to that newly discovered tile. Tectonics is when new hydrothermal vents are placed again you choose depending on where it goes it will be an hydro it will be a smoker or a geyser migration is when we move and that's simply the number of cubes that you own that move to adjacent adjacent places competition is when you remove cubes that's that's evil that's bad now evolution is a two-step process. Evolution is when we score. It's basically when we score, so that's super important. Now, you may have noticed that these tiles have numbers indicated there. Those are numbers that are scored through the evolution action based on majority. If the player who takes the um, evolution, but now they are saying on sand, booyah. If the player takes the sand-related evolution action, now the player who has majority there scores three points, second player scores two points, other players score nothing. And if there's a tie, well, there is a really strict system, uh, a reminder spinning on the board, that reptiles win ties with everybody, cephalopods uh, go after reptiles, then fishes, then crustaceans that don't win any ties. It's a very strict tie-breaking system. After that, you can collect an evolution card, those cards that I showed you earlier on the other side of the board, the trigger events, and there's, there's five of them available. The number indicated there tells you which ones you can choose. For example, if that's my choice, I can choose one in slot one, two, or three of the evolution cards. So the higher here, the more options I have. But maybe I just want that one, so that's uh, that's good enough. Domination is when we acquire these uh, the these uh, famous cubes here. When you take the domination action, you declare the element that you are dominationing. That's totally a word, and you need to determine how many domination points you have. The number is. The number of discs that are present on your board, counting both printed and possible discs, so the number of elements, both printed and discs, that you have, and the number of spaces where you have a presence on the board of that kind. You multiply the number of elements for the number of places. For example, you may remember that the crustaceans have two worms on their display, I mean three spaces, so right now my domination value in worms is of six. If I'm the first player to take that action, then I take the corresponding token and they mark the value there. Booyah! And I take the corresponding special disc. Later, other players may take the domination action, show that they have a higher value, it has to be a higher value, so another player now has eight, and then they get the cube. The, the, the cylinder, the special action cylinder from me. And that's how domination works. Also, at the end of the game, each of disc is worth a number of points equal to the spot where it is on. So this would be worth eight points if this was the end of the game. And that's the idea. And then you have the free action of removing or retrieving all of your retrieving all of your action points and again once everybody has done that that triggers a receipt event where we draw new tiles both resource tiles 
element tiles that you saw earlier, land tiles that you see here. We slide down those elements the way I showed you. And there's the idea. As you can see, you'll collect points from many sources and uh, like bonus points uh, at the end uh, of the game you will also score each and every tile for majority and when all is said and done when all the extinction events are resolved when the asteroid strikes the player with the highest score wins the game i like this game quite a bit and it feels also quite different from the original while still of course belonging to the same general family mind you i haven't played the original since it came out so it has been a while but i do remember quite distinctly the coldness brutal cerebral element of the puzzle of selecting the actions and really having to take into account but if i place it there and marie then takes that one and kevin takes that one then what other actions are going to be available there that being both the pain and joy of the of the original game here it feels like you still have a very interesting puzzle when it comes to the actions that you're selecting, but uh, you are you have less control over things, and it feels more like going with the flow. And in that, uh, the game looked like it was flowing more smoothly. Well, there's a number of things that I want to do, and I'm still, by selecting actions, restricting myself, but I felt that I was worrying less about what the other players were doing. It didn't feel like it was so much part of a puzzle. Again, unless, again, again when it comes to the uh, the puzzle element of the selection of actions. When it comes to the board, of course, I really want to see how many events you're controlling. You want to see if you have majority there. Can I take majority from you or at least sneak in and get a good second, uh, second tier scoring if I think you're going to select a certain tile for scoring. It just felt that it was less about this like cold strategic planning and more about a tactical reacting to how the cards are coming out of the deck. That is super important. How, um, again, certain uh, uh, tokens, action tokens will be placed on the board. Where we stand uh, when it comes to dominance, I really would like this uh, this uh, special action pawn. Uh, but, and I see, well, turns out you have it with actually a fairly low dominance. And where I am right now, I may, you know, change a couple of things on the board and take it from you. It didn't feel like it was so much like a long, spanning, overarching strategy. So it felt more tactical, it felt more about uh, finding targets of opportunity, um, and I like that. I like the fact that the two work differently that way because then, well, I don't have the same game with more blue on the cover and more blue on the art, uh, but I have games that feel quite different. And again, it's interesting how it's more like like um, the flow, the, the structure of the rounds is a lot more flexible and almost blurry in a sense, if more fluid and maybe works with the theme. That is the idea that when you're done with your action points and you retreat them, you just keep playing. It's not like you have to wait for everybody to be done because players will not have the same number of action points and uh, do not, you do not have to place them all to retrieve them. And so I just retrieve mine and I'm still working maybe on a limited amount of elements because uh, the recede phase has not been triggered yet. A lot of interesting decisions, a lot of interesting ideas, again, in a more tactical way. I like the fact that you can score points from many different things, so many different uh, paths to victory. And there is the acceleration, the increasing importance of the survival card that is based on how many events you control, because that will score big later in the game, and so players will fight a lot more for that one. That is possibly actually the one element of really tough direct confrontation. I really need to make sure that uh, that I have it. Or at the very least that a certain player who is close to me in score does not have it. And there is even some diplomacy of the prehistoric marine elements, uh, marine animals here, precisely because, hey, I'm okay if you get it, but I don't want that player to have it, so how can I can we work it together? that way which again makes it pretty interesting but generally speaking dominant species marine is not a repeat of the original game is a reimagining with some really significant changes 
which make the game feel more tactical, more reactive, possibly more chaotic, but I personally like that version of the general idea also.